Man, technology, it's come a long way. Hey guys, Sean Dove here, and today I want to take a look at something a little bit different. So for me personally, I've always been super impressed with how they can make actors look older or younger in movies by using makeup, but more particularly CGI. We've seen it with Brad Pitt in Benjamin Button, and more recently with Will Smith, where we see in the trailer for his new movie, Gemini Man, a much younger version of himself. So today I want to take a look and see if we could achieve similar-ish results, but without the Hollywood budget. I have to give a huge shout out to Ben Marriott, a fellow Aussie artist who's open approach to the design is really inspiring and it's thanks to him I now know about the software that we're going to be having a play with today. It's called EbSynth or EB Synth. I'm not 100% sure on that, but it's designed to make your videos look like animated paintings. The way it works is by taking a reference frame that you've prepared and then it tries to convert the remaining frames to match. And you can give it multiple reference frames from throughout your video and this is going to give it a better result. I got really excited when I saw what this program was actually creating. The videos are really quite surreal and it doesn't feel like just an overlay on footage. It feels like much more than that. It does feel like live paintings. But instead of a painting, I wanted to see if we could use this tool for something else. I wanted to see if we could create reference frames of our actor looking older or younger, feed that into the software and see if it'll manipulate it in the way we want it to. All right, let's jump in and see what we can create. All right, so first up, I needed to get a little bit of footage for us to play with. So I grabbed my mate at work, Hunter. We set up the studio and away we went. And we now got this little clip with the with the now surely infamous line, wow, technology, it's come a long way. So next, I jumped into After Effects and I loaded in that little piece of footage, dropped that into a new composition, and then went up to my composition tab, added that to render queue. Let's come up to our format settings and I needed a JPEG sequence. Set that and now, and now where I'm gonna save this, I'm gonna create a new folder and title this video. I don't need to save this into a subfolder and I'll hit save. Perfect, now I'll hit render and I'll wait for the magic to happen. So in that same hierarchy where we made that video folder, I'm gonna make two additional folders, one titled keyframes and the other titled out. Great, now let's jump into our video folder here and you can see thanks to that export, we've now got, and we've now got a JPEG for each individual frame of our video. And you can also see I've flagged a couple of these frames at different intervals from throughout this video this is me really just trying to have a guess at what frames would work best for this. Right, once I made my selection, I threw them into Dropbox so I could download them onto my phone. All right, next, I grabbed my phone and loaded up FaceApp. And I've been particularly impressed with the, the results that I've been getting from this app. So I loaded up my keyframes and I was having a play with their age filter and I used the old setting and I was particularly impressed with the results I was getting here. You can have a quick look at the before and after there. Great, so we'll apply that, save that to our phone do that for the remaining frames, and then let's get back into the computer. So once we get our frames back onto the computer, you're gonna to wanna to load them into your keyframes folder. And you can see I've labeled them to match the name of their corresponding video frame. Great, so let's jump into EB Synth. And what I wanna do first is load in my video reference frames. So I'm gonna hit select, navigate to that video folder, and just select my initial frame. Hit open and that'll instantly identify its project directory as well. Next, let's do the same for our keyframes. Let's hit select, navigate to the folder they're in and hit OK. Great, so at the bottom here is where we can feed in exactly which keyframes that we've manipulated. So the first one up is frame 22. So I'll enter that into the middle and my stop value is gonna be my initial keyframe, which I know is zero. And where I want this to finish is at frame 74. I can then hit the plus button and I'm gonna enter my next keyframe. And you can see what I'm doing here is just allowing each keyframe to work up to the next one. And I'll do this for each of my remaining keyframes. The next thing we wanna do is select where these are gonna render out to. So we can hit select here, navigate to our out folder that we made before, hit open, and I'll do this for our remaining keyframes as well, setting them to the same output folder. We can then hit run all, Go grab a coffee and wait for this to work its magic. Now, once this is finished in our out folder, we're now gonna have a JPEG for each of those frames and hopefully it's been manipulated in a way that we want it to. All right, let's jump back into After Effects and I'm gonna import our new image sequence. So let's load that in. We'll grab our import, make a new sequence out of that. And great, we've now got our old man converted clip. Now there are a few spots that are looking a bit funky. 
I don't know if I quite did the output right with how I aligned my keyframes, then all you need to do is throw back in your original footage, align that audio, you can animate the opacity if you want, and then we get this. All right, thanks guys. I'll see you again soon. Man, technology, it's come a long way. My glasses look dirty, I feel like they do. <laughs> hey guys, it's Mel here, back with another quick tip. You better like, subscribe, and comment down below if you love your local Thor.